What's going on guys? This is Mia Sin and welcome to the OCG metagame breakdown number 5 and 6. This is going to be a really big one, so 198 top performing decks from 40 tournaments in Japan, mainland China, South Korea, around a week and a half, and of course this is still post Age of Overlord. So the new decks are, uh, you know, they're pretty good and also the uh, OCG players are getting accustomed to them, so they're going, um, they're making them better and everything. And this is the reason why I'm saying that this breakdown is uh, pretty good and uh, will be relevant for us uh, really soon, actually. Anyways, before we proceed, make sure you like and subscribe. You already know the drill. And now let's get right into it. So the best deck at the moment is Rescue Ace. And the most popular way to play it is with the Sinful Spoils engine. So I already made a video about it, but uh, you have a quickly spell, the Hunter Treasure something, which is a one card starter. It's pretty much like an engage, right? You're going to be searching the Diabel Star. And then you discard a card, summon it, and then get yourself one of the Snake Eye spell. And then that summons a level 1 fire from the deck, which is going to be the Rescue Ace Hydrant. And that is a 1 card Rescue Ace full combo if you didn't have to use your normal summon. Because then you search the Airlifter, that gets you Emergency, Emergency summons the Turbulence. And then you get to set 4 Rescue Ace spells and traps directly from the deck. And the Graveyard Effect of Hunter Fiend, uh, or Treasure Hunter or something. You can banish it and then draw 1 card if you can place a... Uh, snake eye or something it might not even be that sinful spoils card a spell from the grave or banished into the bottom of the deck so yeah it's uh, it's it's honestly really nasty the fact that you can do all that with one single card so you're getting four back row and a draw uh, you only need like another discard for that and rescue ace is a deck that can play a lot of hand traps and uh, rescue ace is also kind of similar to an old deck that we used to have in 2020 in the ocg uh, it's pretty much like a uh, Eldritch featuring like Synchron so that they can, well, not really Synchron, but like Neil Fiber access so that they can make like actual negates with Aurorodon, Gen Synchron, Olion, etc. And Rescuous is doing pretty much the exact same thing. So even though the engine itself doesn't actually make negates, they can still go into Aurorodon and then summon themselves a few tokens and then summon the Olion and then uh, make Borlode Savage, Herald of Arclight, whatever kind of negate they need. And um, yeah, it's honestly really disgusting. So <laughs> yeah, thank God that we don't have that in the TCG because evenly matched really destroys this deck. But uh, the, things are different because they have Aurodon for some freaking reason. Anyways, Tyrlaments is the second best deck and yo, I freaking told you. <laughs> it was just a matter of time before the Horus engine would be uh, really popular. And it's getting better and better. So the engine is also going to be something that's uh, covered in this breakdown, so I'm not going to spend uh, too much time here, but so much variety in the kind of builds that you can use for tier elements, honestly. This deck is really nice. It's funny, when a deck is tier 0, everybody hates it, but then when a deck becomes, like, nerfed, people start liking it because it's not really unfair, but it's really creative, and uh, yeah, there's just so many fun ways of innovating with tier elements. So yeah, it's, um, the vibe really changed, honestly, since the Shizu build, because obviously everybody hated uh, when the deck was too good. Anyways, Labyrinth, uh, no shit. Uh, Unchained is still pretty popular, but doesn't really matter too much. The Unchained uh, variant is only playing like one monster and one trap. Well, the, the, the Unchained monsters and the traps, but yeah, it's uh, really not too much. It's mainly a Labyrinth deck. Anyways, Branded, they still have only one Branded opening and one Branded Fusion, but it's still a good deck. And they have the Gimmick Puppet Lock, we don't. Well, I mean, we do, but the thing is, uh, we we don't have the Expulsion, the Trap card, whereas they do. So I think the deck is uh, pretty cracked over there. Anyways, purely the deck got a huge nerf in the OCG because Sleepy Memory is at 1. And that's actually really big. In the TCG, we have 3 Sleepies, but we have 1 Delicious. So it's up to you if you think that Delicious is better than Sleepy. I think Sleepy is way better than Delicious because, I mean, uh, at least considering that we have E. Pure Noir, because being able to draw six cards on your opponent's standby, not really fair if you know what I'm saying. And also, E. Pure Noir gets you access to the E. Pure Yip, which gets you X. Pure Noir uh, on your opponent's turn, which is more realistic because Delicious Memory on your own turn, you're gonna have to turbo out like crazy just to summon like uh, X. Pure Noir turn one and then... You're, you're still gonna get kaiju. You're, you're not that good at the game. <laughs> Anyways, Ad Emancipator, they still have two block dragons, Salamangrade, the new support's really nice. Uh, yo, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button if you want me to make like a updated combo and deck profile video for Salamangrade. It's really, really good. Anyways, Vanquish Soul, again, the new support is pretty decent. It's only one monster and one spell, one trap, I think, but they're not really good. Only the monster is good. If you can reveal two fire monsters in your hand, you can search a Vanquish Soul card from your deck to your hand on either player's turn. That's not too bad. And with Mana Dome, this deck hard loses to Jewel and Maxi, so I understand why it's not that good in the OCG. But in the TCG, it should be better, especially since they have the uh, Mana Dome level 6 Synchro monster. 
So it makes Rio Maharty one card combo. That's really disgusting. I made, again, I made a full video just on that. Anyways, Magician, Bestial Thunder Dragon, Dragon Link. Okay, yeah. It's uh, hilarious how almost nobody's playing that deck here. But again, it won Worlds. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. How are things so much different? Like, sure, Maxi is a thing, but it's not a combo deck. It can play so much on the opponent's turn. So I really don't understand how it's just never doing well at all over there. And also, they're the innovators. I think it's the Chinese who actually came up with Dragon Link. Anyways, Extra Sister, Hero, Math Mech, Huge Deception. It used to be so much better, right? Phantom Knight, Runic, Sky Striker, Tri Brigade, Unchained, Valiant. What the heck? Chimera, sh that's honestly a pretty big downgrade. It was so much better before. Uh, whatever this is. <laughs> Horus, Ethereum, Sword Soul, Necro. What? What are people playing? Chabrigate, Lyrilusk, yes, whatever. Bruh. Mathmech, Adagnistra, eh, that's a pretty good deck. Meta Beat, okay, so that's literally nothing. It's Fossil, Dyna, and Backroll. Mikanko, okay, I don't even care. All right, Rescue Ace, what's, uh, what's up with that deck? Okay, so there, there are multiple ways of stopping Rescue Ace, and people can uh, adapt themselves to pretty much whatever people choose to play. So if people are playing the build where you're synchro summoning and making actual negates, Again, only the OCG can do that, not the TCG. People are playing hand traps to stop them because then they can break and they might not be able to do whatever they want. And again, the, the sequencing might be a little hard because you do have ac uh, you need to have access to Auradon if you want to be able to play. But the issue is that there is no needle fiber and you still need a tuner, uh, or, or rather like a bunch of machines if you want to be able to get there. No, not really a tuner. Whatever. It's, it's, yeah. Anyways, uh, the old iron is not a good card to draw, obviously. And Jet Synchron, I don't really understand why it's there. Oh, no, Axel Synchro, yeah. No shit, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah it kind of makes sense. <laughs> it allows you to get your second tuner monster. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're uh, not really making double Synchro monsters. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a really good deck, really consistent. Plays 12 hand traps. It has so much room for utility cards. And uh, in the TCG, again, there is going to be no maxi, so people are probably going to be playing Jewel instead. Again, there is no ways of Synchro summoning, so people are going to be playing... An extra deck with like 15 link monsters. Friendly reminder that Rescue Ace Hydrant is a one card access code talker, if, if that matters to you, because sometimes you might need uh, you might need to be able to break boards going second. And if you don't know what you're doing, eh, it's, it's gonna be rough. But yeah, again, so many ways to get your stuff going. So this is the quick play spell that I was talking about, the one card starter, and then two Diabell Star and one of the Snake Eye that summons a level one fire monster from the deck. And you can also theoretically summon Jet Synchron. So that's that's an option, but you're probably not gonna be doing that. I mean, you, you might you might want to sometimes. SP Little Knight is actually extremely broken in a deck that Link summons a lot because you're gonna be making like a Link Rebo and then link it off with any other monster summon SP Little Knight, banish a card on either player's graveyard or field, and then when your opponent activates a card effect to target one of your cards, you can go na 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 double farfa, and so they they return back on the end phase. And you can dodge Valor and Infinite Impermanence on your Rescue Ace Turbulence. This card is stupid. I'm gonna make a full video just on every single good application for this card. It's one of the best cards that I've read in several years. It's honestly correct. And it's um, pretty much the sister of IP Mascarina or her rival. I forgot. I mean, people keep correcting me in the comments, but I'm stupid. I, I always forget everything. Anyways, um, this deck obviously is playing 12 hand traps, but that's not enough, Bernard. So we're obviously, we're obviously citing an extra 13 which is stupid <laughs> imagine like adding all of them at the same time in one shot like you're gonna have 25 hand traps in your deck bro two nibiru two shifter two bestials three bell three mourner two judgments one red reboot what is this w what is Yu-Gi-Oh turning into yeah you're just um you basically you're playing a pure hand trap deck featuring other cards yeah that that's that's exactly what this game is uh is uh, turning into anyways uh, tier laments so again the Horus engine is, it was always destined for greatness, but I didn't really know what the correct setup would be because initially I thought that people would be playing like multiple sarcophagus because it's kind of like a one card starter in a way, kind of not really, uh, but people are only playing one or two copies and uh, people are not playing all of the Horus monsters or four different ones out there. But Imseti is obviously the best one, and then Happy is also not too bad. One of them is complete garbage, like it only the only thing it does is summon itself uh, as a level 8 and kind of not really, doesn't really do much else. But yeah, I mean, Imseti uh, actually has an effect in the hand, so you want to you wanna play that card, it's a 1 card starter. Well, 1.5 card starter because you have to discard something else, or rather send, so yeah, it does trigger your Ishizu monsters. 
it, it doesn't trigger your shadows because it does have to be uh, as a cost, if I recall correctly. Uh, correctly. But yeah, no, th this deck just plays a lot of one ofs and two ofs. And so, yeah, it's a little too confusing for me, but I actually did build a uh, tier elements deck list not too long ago, and I actually had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the issue is that you're always making a different board because everything relies on your mills, and your hands are always completely different. So, every hand is a puzzle. It's so complicated to play, and honestly, I feel like there's infinite ways of playing this deck, uh, you know, correctly. Now, I actually find it hilarious that a 42 card deck list is side decking one copy of That Grass Looks Greener. Literally, just peak Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly. <laughs> yeah, let me mill two cards against you if, if you didn't do anything. Or if you did something, uh, maybe I might mill more. Imagine if your opponent goes like Desires, Banish a bunch, and combos off, has like 10 cards left in deck. Pretty much the same thing as drawing this when you're playing like 60 against 40. Honestly, translates to being the same. But yeah, you're only side decking this card going second, never going first. And then we have one random ass, there can only be one which cannot be searched. So that's uh, extremely interesting. Why is an unsearchable one of in here? Like, if it was searchable by Triple Tactic Thrust, at least I'd understand, but no. And then two DD Crows, but no Bistules. Uh, which is also interesting in a format where everybody's playing tier elements. Well, not everyone, but uh, a lot of people. I guess DD Crew is like universally good against a bunch of decks, like even Purely and Labyrinth. Uh, you can banish their traps, but the Bistol monsters usually are a little better. And then Rescue Ace is... Uh... Actually, Rescue Ace can definitely play a DD Crew. I mean, it has the room and uh, you really want to be able to hit like uh, Purely if you're playing this deck. And Kishtira is no longer a thing. So that's the reason why these people can afford that luxury. I'm not going to be covering the extra deck too much. I think it's kind of obvious the zombie vampire is there because... Your Horus Engine, again, gets you a lot of level 8 monsters on the board. And Zombie Vampire is pretty much like a second Chaos Ruler. Arguably better, it, it depends on your definition of better, because it also mills your opponent's cards. So in a mirror match, it's not great, but you can revive back your opponent's monsters. Just like you can revive back your own monsters, and this can really help. So, I really like the Zombie Vampire. And uh, by the way, you're always getting... You always have a play for next turn in this deck. Because your uh, horse monsters are going back to the grave, you can revive them back again, as long as you have the sarcophagus on your field. And uh, yeah, you got Fairy Tail Snow, you got a lot of graveyard effects, Globe Bulb, Jet Synchron. What is this? One random ass diviner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Baron de Fleur looks a little hard to summon. Uh, to be fair, not really, because Cross Sheep can revive back your tuners as well. Yeah, no, this deck is uh, honestly really disgusting. Anyways, Labyrinth now. Okay, so it's uh, it took this long for the OCG to realize that Nibiru was pretty nice, nice with the furniture monsters. So you can go Nibiru and then chain a Labyrinth furniture, and then the Nibiru is going to still try to resolve as much as possible. But still, uh, since you're discarding it uh, for the effect of your Labyrinth, it's no longer in your hand. So when it uh, tries to resolve at the very end, it's not going to be summoning itself. Therefore, it's not going to be summoning a Nibiru token. So you tribute everything without giving anything to your opponent. And in the process, you're you're pretty much getting like a free Labyrinth Trap card from your deck. So it's uh, one of the better cards to play in Labyrinth. Just like Gamma and Driver. I mean, no, no, not, not, not Driver, obviously. But you don't cry when you draw Driver in Labyrinth because it's not the end of the world. So yeah, the furniture build was so good when, you know, Gamma was a three. Now, obviously, it took a pretty big hit. I saw some people still play Gamma, one Gamma and one Driver. And some of them were even playing Delta or Epsilon. Which is doable, I just don't really agree with it, but... I mean, whatever, anything that isn't too bad to discard and that actually has a good effect, you know, why not, right? And uh, Arius is <laughs> not even in this build, which I don't understand at all. I mean, I just felt like the card was unfair and would probably get banned, and it's not even like a one of. And in case you forgot, Arius is the uh, monster that uh, allows you to discard it and then yeah, set a normal trap directly from the hand and you can use it right away. And it's a quick effect on either player's turn. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. That, to me, it sounds kind of broken. I mean, you can play it in like extra sister and random bullshit to like go Vadis and then summon double XCs on turn zero. I don't know. It's, to me, again, that it sounded good, but for them, apparently, the OCG guys, they don't really care too much. I mean, they, they were still trying to play three cool clock, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. If I were if I were them, I would actually play maybe like two Ku Clocks and one Arius. At least one Arius. Try to fit it in, but I don't know, man. They're just wired differently. Anyways, the extra deck. It's not really like I have much to say, but again, SP Little Nye just uh, giving you an idea of how good it is. But Typhon, a star, Doomsday something, huge ass name. Basically, it's the enemy of Zeus or... Someone who tried to kill Zeus and almost managed to get there, or maybe did win. Forgot the story, but it's a, it's a pretty broken card. 
really easy to summon going second if your opponent summoned at least twice uh, twice from the extra deck last turn or that turn, which is not going to happen because nobody's really summoning a bunch of times on your own turn from the extra deck. But, I mean, we never know. And this card is the uh, Kryptonite of every monster with 3,000 or more attack. So yeah, if you summon this going second with any monster, you're going to be able to potentially break boards like there's no tomorrow. It's kind of like a skill drain, any compose, but not a quick effect. So still a really good card. And then Underworld Goddess to out annoying, annoying cards like uh, Expert Noir. And no uh, Daruma Karma Cannon because it is a TCG exclusives, uh, exclusive. So I really feel bad for them. They kind of fold a lot of that card. I mean, this is a fiend at the end of the day, I think, right? Uh, so yeah, eh, yeah, it's, you can still summon it under under the lock of uh, Welcome Labyrinth. Uh, so it's not too bad, but again, it's really hard to summon a bunch of monsters uh, when you're playing a trap deck. Uh, but at this point, Labyrinth is barely a trap deck, it's uh, almost a combo deck. Anyways, the issues of Monstrous, Phantasme, that's actually really spicy. I need to make a video on this card, but it's actually really good against uh, Rescuers. They're always summoning Link Monsters. Uh, tier Laments, maybe not, but they can go into Cross Sheep, but whatever. I mean, your Phantasma is not going to survive for too long. It, all it's really going to be doing is just mulligan cards from the hand into the field. So unless you can do something really worth it with this Phantasma, usually not the best. But if you're playing a lot of hand traps, Phantasma is insane because you can dig into those hand traps. Otherwise, it's not uh, ideal. And in slow formats, Phantasma is broken. And like, imagine if Sky, Sky Striker ever becomes tier zero, like the most played deck. It's not, it's never gonna happen, but we can always dream. Phantasma is gonna wreck the living shit out of them. Anyways, in conclusion, Rescue Tier Laments and Labyrinth are still the best deck, and Purely is uh, no longer really doing too well. And the Horus package, like I said, is also doing better. I, I don't understand how Necroface can see play, but it does make sense in Phantom Knight and Orcus. Ethereon, that's barely a deck. Sinful Spoils is also seeing play with Horus because both of these engines are just so splashable, especially decks that can mill. They use the Horus engine better than everyone else, and again, they have Chaos Ruler, we don't, but at least we both have Zombie Vampire, even though that's um, not even gonna matter too much. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts about the OCG format in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.